So let's go ahead and identify some western wheatgrass. So what we're looking for when we look out on the property or on, on the ground is we'll see these blue tinged long leaves that um, are spaced every so often across the landscape. And this would be western wheatgrass. And if we pull it up and we look at the leaves, you can see that they have very um, distinct veins. And when you pull on them like this or rub backwards, um, it almost feels as if it will cut you. It's very rough. And the reason we see them every so often on the grass is because they're a rhizominous grass, meaning they spread by underground roots. So each one of these plants is connected through an underground root system, kind of like an aspen tree. Because western wheatgrass is a rhizominous grass, you may or may not see a seed head on that grass. But if it does, it'll be a spike with seeds alternating up the stem and about two to six inches long. Western wheatgrass is one of the most common native grasses seen in western United States. It greens up in early March through April and matures as summer progresses. It provides abundant and palatable forage for grazing animals through the spring and summer months. It is fairly resistant to grazing pressures but thrives best in a rest rotational system. As a recap, western wheatgrass is bluish green in color. It is a rhizominous grass, meaning it spreads by underground roots. It has deep veins, which result in rough leaves, and it provides good forage for grazing animals.